To find the area of a parallelogram, we're going to use the formula area equals base times height. Now we have to make sure the base and height are perpendicular. This formula will also work for any kind of parallelogram, so it also includes rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. So to find the area of this first parallelogram, I'm going to take the base, which we'll call 30, and the height, which is perpendicular to that base, is 17. Now be careful that you don't use 20 as your uh, height. That is not perpendicular to the base, so we cannot use that side. So multiplying 30 by, 20, or 30 by 17 gets us an area of 510. I, uh, I'm also going to be picky about labels. So area is always some kind of unit squared, centimeter squared or feet squared or whatever. In this case, they have not given us any units. So let's just say we've got units squared as our area. Uh, the second figure is also a parallelogram. So to find its area, I'm once again going to do area equals base times height. Now in this case, we have a couple different numbers we can use for the base and height. I could consider 6 the base, and notice all I want is the actual physical base of the parallelogram. The height, then, is not even going to intersect the base, but the height that is perpendicular to that base is a height of 8. So it's okay. We don't need to add on that missing piece right there. We can just do the actual physical base of 6 times the height of 8 to get an area of 48. And once again, we don't have units, but make sure you label your, label your answer. I'm going to say unit squared. Um, now, there was also another way we could find the area in this case. I could also have considered this side to be the base of the parallelogram, in which case 4 would be the height. If I tried to do that, you would see I would get the same exact answer. So 4 times 12, uh, base times height, also gets me 48 square units. Okay. Let's go back and also find the perimeter of each of these parallelograms. To find the perimeter of an object, that simply means add up all four sides. Uh, make sure you don't include sides that are not uh, actual sides of the parallelogram. So in this case, my sides are actually 30 and 20, so I'll add those two up. And because a parallelogram has four sides, I want to make sure I add up four numbers. I've got another 30 and another 20 for those other two sides. Adding all those values to get together gets me a perimeter of 100. And in perimeter, your units are just feet or centimeters or inches, nothing squared. Uh, once again, in this case, because we don't have a label, we'll just say units. Okay. Same idea over here for this parallelogram. Uh, only add up actual sides of the par parallelogram. The sides are 6 and 12. That H just a height. It's not actually a physical side of the parallelogram. So 6 plus 12, and then another 6 and another 12 for our four sides total, gets us a perimeter of 36 units. Okay, uh, and last up with parallelograms, we have a square. Uh, let's go ahead and draw it. And you guys know squares have four congruent sides, so I'll put my tick marks on. Uh, each side is given as 14 inches, so I'll label that. And we know uh, squares have right angles in the corner. So in this case, because a square is a type of parallelogram, I can once again use my area of a parallelogram formula, base times height. And since my base and height are just the sides, this time the sides are perpendicular to each other, all I need to do is 14 squared, or 14 times 14, uh, to get an area of 196. This time they did give me a label, so I'll say inches squared. And to find my perimeter, add up all four sides. Since they're all the same, rather than add 14 four times, I'll just do 14 times 4 to get a perimeter of 56 inches. When we're working with triangles, we're going to use the formula to find area uh, of 1 half times base times height, or some people like to do base times height divided by 2. They're both ex exactly the same. So basically, take your parallelogram formula and divide it in half. So let's go ahead and find the area and perimeter of some triangles down here. Once again, your base and height must be perpendicular to each other. So find your right angle. In this case, it's right here. So I'm going to say my base and height are 8 and 21. So to find the area, I've got uh, base times height, but then don't forget uh, that one half in front. So multiplying a half times 8 times 21 gets me an area of 84. And once again, be careful with labels. I'll say unit squared. <clears throat> And perimeter is add up the three sides, in this case, that make up the triangle. So my three sides this time are a 17, a 10, and a 21. Don't include the 8. It's not an actual side of the triangle. Uh, adding those together get me a perimeter of 48 units. Okay, next up, uh, once again, we're going to uh, find our perpendicular segments, uh, our base and our height. Uh, our base is going to be considered down here because there's my height that was given to me because there's my right angle. Uh, now, most people, they get the height, you know, the height's 8, but they're not sure what to use for the base. They don't know whether to use 9 or whether to add those together and get 16. And once again, just like with parallelograms, we only want to include the actual physical base of the triangle. So we're only going to include 9 in the formula. That 6 is not part of uh, the base. So 1 half times 8 times 9 gets us an area of 36 square centimeters. 
and the perimeters add up the three physical sides, which are 9, 10, and 17. Don't include those extra values. They're just heights or extra information that we don't need. So my perimeter, coincidentally enough, comes out to be also 36, but this time just centimeters. And last up, one more triangle to work with. This time we have a right triangle, so my base and my height are just two sides of the triangle, but it turns out that we don't know the base this time. Uh, but since we do have a right triangle, hopefully you guys have already started thinking what we need to do, we're going to do Pythagorean theorem. So we'll say 5 squared, I'll just call the bottom side x squared, or x, and then uh, equals with a hypotenuse squared 13. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip doing the math on that, do that kind of in my head or off to the side. That uh, missing side, oops, we used x, that missing side is going to have a length of 12 in this case. If you need to check the work for yourself, go ahead and pause the video and check that. Uh, or trust me, that base is going to be 12. So to find my area, since we have a triangle, 1 half times base times height uh, gets me an area of 30 square units this time because I wasn't given a label. And then perimeters add up your three sides in a triangle. So 5 plus 12 plus 13. Uh, once again, weird coincidence, we get the same number. Uh, perimeter is 30 units.